guys, how's it going? So today I got some more blues licks for you. We're going to be working out of the key of B minor. And we're basically just going to be using triads and double stops to play these licks. I've noticed that it's become a really huge part of my playing using triads and double stops. No matter what I'm playing, if I'm playing rhythm or lead, arranging a song, playing a guitar solo, I'm always finding ways to use these and throw them in. Um, it's really helped me identify everything inside of the pentatonic positions and really get my footing on every part of the fretboard. So um, what we're going to start out doing, I love doing the triads thing because you can use them to really see inside and connect pentatonic positions together. You can also use it to rake down into notes, which is what I love doing. And you can also use them as arpeggios if you want to just play out of those. So we're basically just going to be working with a D major triad, a B major triad, and a G major triad. And when we do those, it's basically, I don't think about modes and scales and all that, but it's basically the Aeolian mode, I guess, because we're using your flat third and your flat six and your flat seven. But um, I, I really don't think that way. But we start out here with D major. And the reason this works, because in the key of B, you have D, F sharp, and A, which is your flat three, your five, and your flat seven, right? So you can hear how it sounds against the B, so. So to get the sound, you want to make sure we're going to do this rake thing. So deaden out the strings, make sure you can deaden them out with just your right hand to begin with. Then to get all that unwanted noise, put them down. So you have 7 on G and B, 5 on E. Okay, so we're going to break down on it. And then I'm going to hit 5 on the E string, I'm going to pop it with my finger. And when you do this, you don't want to keep your hands, your fingers still. You want to kind of roll them over and go middle, ring, go G, B to E. Right, so you get that kind of sound. So after you rake down, you hit 5 on E. Go 7 on E. Pull off 7 to 5. And then go 7 on the B string. Okay, I'll land 7 on B with my ring finger. Then we're going to walk up here and play this double stop. We're going to bend it up, hybrid pick it, pick and finger. Have 9 on B, 10 on E. Just bend them up like a quarter step. This is basically like a B flat 7 triad. But we're just leaving out that F note. Okay, so we have... And we're going to go back and revisit this, kind of doing a call and response. So we play the same lick again, right down on that D major triad. Hit 7 on E, pull off 7 to 5 on E, go 7 on B, and then go 7 on G and B, hit them together, just kind of bend them down slightly. Uh, so your first part, alright so that'll be your first part, then we're going to go back to this D major again, and this will set us up walking into your B major triad, alright so we have... Okay, now we're going to do the D major again. Okay, so we're just going to play it the same way. Right down on the triad, pull off 7 to 5 on E, land 7 on B. Then we're going to walk into B major triad. So we'll have uh, 8 on G, bar 7 on B and E. Same thing, right? You want to rake down on it. You want to roll your index finger over from B to E. Pop the high E with your middle finger, and then catch 9 on the E string, and then we're going to slide back 10 to 9 and pull off to 7 on E, and after you pull off 9 to 7 on E, you're going to catch 9 on B. Alright, so you have... Okay, then we're going to walk up, we're going to play a G major triad, alright? So this works because we have G is our flat 6, B is our root, and D is our flat 3rd, right? So play it against the B, you can kind of hear that minor tone, tonality there. So, so same thing that we did on the D major, get that G, B on 12, 10 on the high E, rake down on it, pop the high E on 10 with your middle finger, and get 12 on the E string. Then slide back 13 to 12 and pull off the 10 on E. And then catch 12 on B. 
And after you catch 12 on B, use your uh, middle finger for that. And then slide up to uh, 15 on B. You can use, I think I use my ring finger maybe. No, I use my middle finger, but whatever feels comfortable to you, right? So that's that G major triad there. And then we're gonna slide up from 12 to 15 on B and just bend it up gradually. Okay, and then um, from here, what's the next part? Then I'm gonna do this typical thing, you know, I love doing this box three, I think it's probably my favorite pentatonic position, but um, I'm gonna slide in 13 on G and 12 on B at the same time. And I'm just gonna make the, the G string kind of slight and let off of it real quick. You kind of slide into it real quick and then mute it and then just give B on uh, 12 some vibrato. All right, so real slow we have. All right, and then from here, I'm gonna pull off uh, 14 to 12 on B. All right, so this is a cool little thing. Um, this is the kind of thing when you play something like this that's real simple, where you're not really doing anything, but it's just kind of, you stay in one place and do one thing, like gradually bending the note up and up and up. This is really what gets people's attention in the crowd when you're playing live. This is the kind of thing people would call like, oh, he's got feel when you do those kinds of things. And it's always the simple things that really grab people and kind of pull them in. And if you're just sitting here shredding away doing all this, people don't really have time to say anything. It's like if you were telling someone you love them and you were like, oh my God, I love you so much. You're so beautiful. You're so awesome. You're so amazing. Oh my God. People are like, whoa, man, back up. But if you just walk up to somebody and was like, hey, come here. I love you. It's like, whoa, I really felt that. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's kind of how I think of it. It's just like songwriting, like kind of the way you say things and the beat that you come in on it kind of makes it have a different feeling. So, um, getting a little deep there. But, uh, so anyway, after we do that little, we're going to pull off 14 to 12 on B. Then I'm going to get 15 on B. I'm just going to bend this up each time. I'm going to bend it up like a quarter step more. I think I bend it up, uh, eight times. And I kind of stop where I leave off and then bend it up another quarter step. And then I'll do an overbend like uh, on the ninth time or something. I'll do an overbend like a step and a half and I'll grab the G string with it and just kind of give it that. All right, so you have that. And then just come down, hit B on 12, right? And it's a good thing, you know, if you're playing live, if you're improvising over something, it's just a good way if you're not sure where to go or you just kind of need some time to gain your footing and think about your next move. These are fun little ways to just sit there and hang on a note and do something that's cool, that's going to have some feel to it, that's going to kind of, you know, hit people in the chest a little more. And so you can figure out where to go and it kind of buys you some time, right? So all together real slow we have... So that's the whole lick. Um, there's not a lot to it, but it's a great thing to kind of work on, right? Like it took it took me so long to get that raking thing down, and so now I do it all the time. I probably overuse it, but I remember the first time I heard it was when uh, what was it? It was John Mayer's Live in L.A. DVD years ago, and he has a song called um, "Come When I Call," and he's playing a Guild 335, kind of similar to what this guitar looks like, and um, Everything he played was just this like rakey kind of. I don't I can't I don't even know what the song is right. I can't remember, but um anyway, 
Doing all that kind of shit, right? So you want to try to visualize where these triads sit inside of your pentatonic position. So if you're sitting right here on D, you know, you know, you can get into all sorts of licks and just, it gives you another way to be able to visualize things instead of seeing like a scale pattern. You can see all these kind of things in between it. You know, I've, I've done videos on that where I kind of see like a, all the major stuff inside of there and all these ways you can use to kind of have semitones and half step passing tones in between notes and licks and stuff like that to connect things together. But um, that's everything, man. Just practice slow, have fun. See you next time.